Ta-da! <laughs> was it worth it? I don't like that call, that countdown thing, man. I'm sitting here getting all stressed out about it, like freaking out. Like, just let's just let's just let's go. What are we waiting around here for? Plus, it's just it's like big countdown. It's like me. <laughs> I don't know. So this is the second time I've done this. Um, I added fancy graphics, although my hands get cut off, so that's stupid. But we're, it's a work in progress. We're getting there. Um, spent uh, spent all day doing this. I don't know if any of those things work, by the way. I don't know if the donation counter works. I don't know if the follower counter works. I don't know if a single thing works. We'll see. If we get any followers that are new, to, if you're not a Cheese and Packer follower, please follow the page, and uh, we'll see what happens. And if nothing happens, which is exactly what I anticipate, then, um, then that sucks. Um, and I got the taco fund, because... Because why not? Speaking of, while we wait for somebody to call in, by the way, anytime, call that number. I don't know if it works. It should. It worked last time. Some people said the phone number didn't work, but I got some phone calls. It worked just fine. When is the call-in stream planned for? Right now. <laughs> I can't respond to text messages right now. Um, what was I talking about? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much to uh, Woody in Arizona. For jumping in the Venmos. I really do appreciate that. I'm honestly not sure if that's what I was about to say or not, but thank you for that. Um, oh, topics. <clears throat> this thing still sounds like it's all really loud. Really loud, really loud, really loud. How's that? It seems all right. <clears throat> um, coaches. What do you what do you think, man? What do you what do you what are you thinking? What are you thinking about the coaches? Any thoughts on the coaches? Any any coaches you like? Or um, what else? Oh, the draft. I've got uh, got my handy dandy little cheat sheet here. If you want me to look up any prospects, you could talk about it. Or like I said, you could literally call in and talk about whatever you want. I don't care. I, I genuinely, I don't care. I'm here to be your friend, your motivator, your counselor, your brother. Um, I'm here to be your confidant. I don't know. I'm out of things, but. Um, Go ahead and try it. Try it. Also, somebody do a message. Are there any? Oh, cornerback in need in the draft. Thank you, Patrick. That should have popped up on the stream, I think. I think. Do I have a... Uh, I do have a chat box, so that's not working. But thank you, Patrick, for jumping in. Why don't we start there? Why don't we start with the cornerbacks for the class? Any cornerbacks in particular that you like? Mr. Patrick, who is a top fan of the page, by the way. Any thoughts? What do you think? Because I'm kind of blanking on who the cornerbacks are. Could we, could we, you know, I'm going to call the phone number. I'm going to call the phone number right now make sure it's working. While we're waiting for Patrick, hey, thoughts on Wade Felipe? Felipe. Well, <laughs> well, Josh, um, first of all, Packernet pod Podcast is, um, is my thing. Uh, I talked about Wade Phillips a little bit. Wade Phillips, first of all, he's all over Twitter, which is awesome. Basically sounds like he really wants the job, but he's just going to kind of, you know, whatever happens, happens. I hate to dog the guy, and I'm not, I'm not going to dog the guy. I shouldn't even say that. Um, the biggest issue, as I try to type and talk at the same time that I have with that whole situation, is I'm just a little biased um, when it comes to the um, the older kind of guys. You know what I mean? Um, I just feel like the league is kind of getting away from them a little bit. I'm also wary of the fact it's not a hey, incoming call from me. All right, it is working. So you all are a bunch of liars and um, cowards, and and I don't like you. Uh, Wade Felipe is. Um, I I just I worry that he's he's Mike Pettin. What did we say about Mike Pettin when we hired him? He's never had a bad defense. DVOA top five every year. He's had. A, 
just an amazing, brilliant mind. Same with Dom Capers. He's brilliant. He's amazing. He's all these things. And it's all true. But he, he wasn't very good. Um, so I think I want somebody that's a little bit more younger, a little bit more in tune with modern defenses, a little bit more hungry. You know, somebody that's really wanting to um, break into the scene as opposed to somebody who's like, yeah, I might retire. I might take a job. Whatever. I might do both at the same time. I might take a job and be semi-retired while I'm doing it. I don't know. So I'm just, I'm not, I'm not super into it. And again, the fact that he didn't get a job, like maybe, maybe he took the year off. Maybe people were begging him, please, please come work. And he's like, no, I just can't. I need to take some time unless the Packers call, then I'll do it. But those are my thoughts on Wade Felipe. What else we got going on here? Do you think we will keep Jamal? Um, well, I think we all know Aaron's probably out. Kind of interesting on Jamal. Um, because I think they really like Jamal, but it's also a weird dynamic where I feel like if we keep Jamal, Jamal's going to be our top guy, and then we drafted A.J. Dillon in the second round to be our backup, and that's just that whole dynamic is weird to me. And so I, I kind of like the idea. I love Jamal, but I don't mind the idea of not paying either of them, moving Jamal or A.J. up to that number one spot. We have Dexter. We draft somebody who hopefully becomes sort of that number two. We get maybe like an, an Aaron Jones-esque kind of running back, and then it's A.J. Dillon, new guy, Dexter. I don't hate that. I mean, I, I'd love to keep Jamal because he does a great job, but I feel like we're paying a lot of money for, and, and a lot is relative. But I, I think, again, not trying to sound um, mean, but I, I think he's rather replaceable in terms of what he can do as a runner. Um so I, I, I think we invested a lot in a running back, and I think we should take advantage of that and, and roll with that, you know? I mean, take the good with the bad. The bad is nobody liked that you took a running back. The good is we don't have to pay a bunch of money for running backs. So, um, I mean, I'll, I'll be happy either way, but the, with the financial situation the way that it is, I'm okay if we decide to move on. Should we resign Aaron Jones to $14 million a year? No. I don't think we should resign Aaron Jones to 14 million. I don't know if that's exactly what your question is, but um, no. Uh, 14 million a year is that too much? Yes, it is. I wouldn't pay him. I wouldn't pay him 10 million dollars a year because again, we don't have to. I mean, look, if we were flush with cash, if we're the Indianapolis Colts and we've got like 80 million dollars and we don't even know what to do with it, all right, whatever. Here's 10 million bucks. Stick around. Cool. We don't have any money, and. Um, I also think we've got a situation with a head coach that um, I'm not going to say anybody can come in and do what Aaron Jones does because he's a special running back, but I also think that um, I'm talking too much now. Nobody's going to want to call in. I also uh, feel like similar to what we see with the Minnesota Vikings, similar to what we've seen with the Rams and what we've seen with the 49ers and teams that, that run kind of similar styles of offenses that Matt LaFleur runs, you're going to see a lot of production from running backs. I just think that that's the reality of the situation. Not everybody's going to be equally as good, but I also think A.J. Dillon, when you get him acclimated to what we do here, is going to be really good, and we're going to regret paying 14, 10, 12, whatever, million dollars to Aaron Jones. So, no, I'd rather not. <clears throat> is Devin Funch just playing next year? I'm, it's kind of a, a non-issue, I guess, for me, just because I don't expect much from him, but we also don't, don't have to pay him much, so I, I guess I don't really care. It would help from a depth standpoint. Um, that's fine. That's fine. I'm going to pause for a moment. Asante Sam. All right. See, now, now he got me the list. I was just going to say, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to pull these up. This is a call-in show. I'm not supposed to be talking. I have a podcast to talk. You talk. I don't have to do anything. You do the talk. You tell me your opinion. What do you think? Why don't you, why doesn't Josh call in and tell me what he thinks about Aaron Jones? Should we pay him? How much should we pay him? Cornerbacks. What do we know about cornerbacks? I'm just pulling this up. I'm not telling you nothing. You figure it out yourself. I am going to look these guys up, though, while I'm waiting. I, I already did talk about Asante Samuel a decent amount, so I'm going to skip that. We'll go with Eric Stokes first. Looking for Eric Stokes up in this Oh, my goodness. We got a bad girl. Hi, welcome to the show. What's your name? Hey, this is uh, your old buddy, JJ. J oh, jeez. Hi, JJ. How's it going, Ryan? Pretty good. What's going on, man? Hey, you know, I uh, 
sent in one question ever to your uh, voice line for the podcast back in the day, and that was, uh, uh, why the heck do we keep Sean around? So, uh, you know, a season later, kind of feel pretty vindicated there, but I was curious, what, what, uh, what do you think is the biggest priority here in this off season? Um, if we try and run it back one more time. Yep. It's a big question that's been going through my mind all week. I'm sorry, did you ask the question? Yeah. I'm oh. curious, what, what, uh, what do you think is the, our biggest priority here? Because that's what I've been oh. thinking about all week right now. Is Gotcha. Like last year I thought it was pretty defined. You know, it's, let's let's roll, roll out the kinks in the offense and get them clicking like they need to be. That was pretty apparent a year ago, and now I'm not really sure – what are we trying to do this this off season? <sighs> Not fall apart. <laughs> I, we got. <laughs> I, I think I like I like the team. I mean, we got like like I talked about all the cornerstone pieces we have. We just got to make sure we don't go backwards a lot. And the one thing that really scares me is corner. Um, if it's mm-hmm. Jair and nobody, that terrifies me. Um, I mean, the offensive line is they did a good job, but I'm still iffy on it, especially if Corey Lindsley leaves. You know, what does that even look like? You know, is are we going to have, who's our right tackle? Who is our, I don't know who anybody is and who's staying and who's going. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on with David Bakhtiari and his injury. So I'm worried about that. Um, just talked about running back. I don't know what's going on, exactly what the running back room is going to look like. It's just a matter of let's please not fall apart like the Vikings did. They lost several core pieces, and their team, they went from being a contender to being pure garbage and i don't want to be an embarrassment yeah. next year um so just try to stay afloat and that's part of i think that's part of what my fear was about getting rid of Petten. is i know if we keep Petten, we're at least not worse and um that's what scares me i guess about getting rid of Petten. is i'm just i'm i'm scared we go backwards because it's hard to even maintain as good as we were this year so that's that's yeah. a massive fear um but I think they've done a fantastic job so far as far as hiring the right GM, hiring the right coach. They went out in free agency to get edge rushers. They got amazing edge rushers. So, I mean, everything they've done for the most part, I've been blown away by. So um, I'll trust so them. We, you know, I'm just we, worried. If we, we straighten out uh, special teams here to where it's just not a liability, I feel like that in and of itself already takes us to uh, the next level where we're not always asking Rogers to dig us out of a hole first before he does some some uh, benefit for us. Right. Like I said, I was saying that before, too, where it's like special teams is so boring these days. Nothing ever happens, but that's all we need. Everybody just starts at the 25. That's just automatic. Everybody, when you kick it to the one, they make it to the 25. Everybody stops. The Packers special teams has been so terrible, though. They kick it to the one, we make it to the 10. And when we kick it off to somebody, they make it to the 40. It's just, it's such an unfair balance. Just be average. (laughs) Just be normal. Let's just everybody start at the 25, and that's fine. I don't need you to return touchdowns every third game. I don't even care about that. Just start at the 25 and make them start at the 25, and that's it. That's all I care about. Couldn't uh, couldn't agree more. Hi, JJ. I'm I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and hang up on you. I'm going to hang up on you. All right, I'm calling from the uh, fishing chain, so just. uh, Get back to fishing out here. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, take care, man. <laughs> I got to figure out that that whole thing. Like, how do I rudely say it's time to move on now? Politely say, no, nah, we'll stick with rude. I'm better at rude. I'm good at rude. I'll just stick with rude. I should just, I should not even tell people I'm hanging out. I should just hang up on people. Mid sentence. Can somebody call in real quick? Do me a favor. Call in. <laughs> we'll have a conversation. <laughs> We'll have a quick little chat. Hey! Oh, man. I'm going to feel so bad if I do this. I'm not going to do it. Hello. What's your name? Hi. This is Danny D. Long-time listener. How you doing? Doing great. What's going on, Danny D? Uh, not too much. So, to be honest, I'm a little surprised that the Packers did let go of Mike Pettin this late in the game, I guess. Uh, I've been seeing like, a lot of teams signed younger and guys with like not big names yet. So my question to you is, with us being late into the defensive coordinator move, are you kind of concerned about that, or do you think it's more of a look at the draw? What What are your thoughts on it? Well, when we got our head coach, we got kind of an early jump on it, which was a big benefit. Yeah, that does kind of concern me. Um, I just, I guess, my thought is, 
Hold on, I'm going to do that rude hang-up thing. Boom, Danny D, in your face. Thanks for listening. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, I don't think, I mean, if there was a concern about there's nobody out there, right? I, I, I just don't think that they're going to blindly go into this like, oh, man, we fired a guy. Maybe now we should start looking. Oh, shoot, there's nobody here. That sucks. Hey, hey Mike, you want to come back? I think going into this, they have a plan. They have a list of guys, probably some internal guys that they would be comfortable with today. You know, Jerry Gray. Um, and so they've, they've, they've probably got a list of names right now that they like, that they're willing to, you know, that, that they've worked with in the past, that they know, worst case scenario, we got this guy right here ready to go. Um, and then they're going to broaden that. You know, I want to talk to that guy. I want to know that coach out in Cincinnati, the, the uh, you know, whatchamacallit, um, head coach? I think he's the head coach. I don't know. But I want to go talk to that guy, see what he's about. Bring some people in that we don't know. And then, again, worst case scenario, Gray, boom, this guy, uh, Wade Phillips, you got it, you know? So that's that's my hope. I have that same kind of fear of, shoot, maybe there's nobody out there and we're just we, we're, we're going to end up picking from a group that we don't like. But I just I have to assume they're not going to do that and that they've got um, a list of, of names already picked out. All right, I'm going to go to Eric Stokes since it's sitting here. Six foot one, weighed 185 out of Georgia. I should pull up my big board, but I don't have a lot of time for that. So we're not going to do that. What do we got? He's played three years at Georgia. Seems as though 2020 was not the greatest year ever. Georgia did play, you know, a lot of teams you got to watch out because they played like 40 snaps because of, you know, it was a COVID year or whatever. Georgia played quite a bit, so his seeming regression, at least as far as PFF is concerned, um, doesn't have anything to do with that. Now his passer rating is fantastic. I don't exactly know what the issue is. But he's, he's graded out consistently pretty well all three years. Um, a lot of these guys you'll see first year trash, second year not bad, third year really good. And then you're kind of worried if there's like that one big blow up year, if that was kind of flukish or whatever. You know, like um, our quarterback Jordan Love, he had one really good year. And if he had got drafted that year, it would have been maybe kind of fluky because the very next year everything completely fell apart. Um, this is more consistent. Again, it was a little bit of a down year, but still good for for three years. 82, 81, 72 uh, were his grades. Uh, NFL passer rating starting in 2018, 54, 3, 82, 6, 43, 6. Um, he's never really given up a ton of yards except in 2019. Even then was 356, which is not a lot. Um, that's about what Jair gave up this year. So, I mean, as far as what you're looking for um, the size is not an issue 185 is a little bit small uh, the run defense grade is there the tackling grade is phenomenal the coverage is there the statistics look fine again I haven't watched any of these guys but there's no like with Asante Samuel look at him and say he's small which Jair is too which is fine but you kind of wonder like I wonder if the Packers aren't interested in that kind of a thing but with Eric Stokes it's like yeah you like Eric Stokes cool I'll have to check him out I, I don't see any problem with him here there's a lot of guys that I look at and it's like eh a little bit iffy, but um, Stokes is not one of them. Thoughts on the fourth down call in the NFC Championship game? I'll look at some other of these guys. I just I don't want to just sit here and read PFF stats for a long time. That would be boring. Thoughts on the fourth down call in the NFC Championship game? Should have gone for it. Here's here's my biggest issue, Josh. I think the consensus is you probably should have, and obviously looking back, can somebody please follow the page just so I can see if this is working? I should unfollow and follow it. Anyways, um, I have about this much, your, the camera's over here, I moved it, it's sitting on a cup. Um, this this much faith right here that they would have gotten the first down and then gotten the two-point conversion. I don't remember ever, I don't remember one time this year they converted a two-point conversion. Now, maybe they have. I don't remember them ever doing it. I can remember failing a dozen times, but the odds that they're going to score and get a two-point conversion... And then if they don't, they have to get a stop and then score and get a two-point conversion. The benefit here is, you know, what's more likely? You either score and get a two-point conversion, or you get a stop and then score and get a two-point conversion, or we're just going to kick a field goal and get a stop, and then we just need a touchdown. We don't need a two-point conversion. It seems like the second one is a lot harder. It just felt like it's not, though. Take the points. They're sitting there. Can we get a stop? Of course we can get a stop. And they, the defense basically did. If you look at it, I think Aaron Rodgers, if they didn't throw that flag, Aaron Rodgers would have gotten the ball with uh, like a minute and a half or a minute and something left to go get a touchdown, and you don't even need an extra point after that. 
if they don't throw the flag, there's a good chance the Packers win the game. Um, so I, I know I'm in the minority. I know most people don't agree with that. Even Matt LaFleur will probably come back and say, I should have not done that. Um, Aaron Rodgers didn't seem happy with the call. I completely understand the call. Completely understand the call because I just I had no faith. I mean, they, they tried, what, three times from where they were. They couldn't get a touchdown. We're going to ask them one more try to get a touchdown and then convert a two-point conversion, which I don't think they've done all year. Um, I, I just I, I think there's no way. I don't, I don't think there's any, I give it a 2% chance that, that we win if he goes for it right there. Um, draft Travis Etienne in the first. Uh, why? That's my question to you. Feel free to call in. Short list on DC. I don't really have one. I did talk about it on the podcast today. I already forgot the guy's name. One guy that intrigues me really quickly. If I can Google his name. That's not the right guy. I don't know. Who was the defensive coordinator last year, dummy? Oh, James Betcher. Um, Not going to be very popular, just like the fourth down call. Nobody's going to agree with me. Uh, James Betcher kind of stuck out to me for the... This is not what was supposed to happen, but this is fine. Um, The reason he stood out is, although the Giants' defense wasn't great, it was way better than it should have been. I I think in 2019, they were the 30th-ranked defense. I think in 2020, they were the 9th-ranked defense. That is a terrible football team. They don't have any edge rushers. They don't have any corners. They don't have anything on that team. So that's impressive. That, that, that to me, kind of blew me away how good they were. Beyond that, the things that really worked very well were things like defensive line. Incredibly good defensive line. Also, very interesting note, they went out and brought in two Green Bay Packers, one of which was Blake Martinez, who had a phenomenal year. Mike Pettin had no idea how to use uh, Blake Martinez. Now, that's not, I mean, maybe it just didn't fit the system, whatever, and he's a better fit over there, whatever, but that, to me, is just like, if he had been our defensive coordinator, we never would have gotten rid of Blake Martinez because he went to the Giants and was phenomenal. And remember, we have better pieces than the Giants do. I don't know about better defensive line overall, but Kenny Clark is probably a better player than the guys that they have. They do have, like, four guys that are pretty talented. But um, the ability to take not very good players and make a pretty good, stingy defense is impressive, especially for a team that has really good players and doesn't seem to get a lot of production out of them. We want somebody that can come in and get the best out of his guys, and I feel like Pettin, that was his biggest issue. The defense wasn't bad, but it wasn't up to the standard when you consider the best corner in football. Zadarius Smith, Rashawn Gary, Preston, Kenny Clark, the production we got out of him was a borderline embarrassment. I mean, he should have been a pro bowler. He should have had double-digit sacks. I mean, he should be a premier defensive tackle, and instead it's like, you know, he had a couple good plays here and there, got a sack here and there. It was nowhere near good enough. I mean, we're talking one of the better safety duos in football down the stretch. Um, it was nowhere near good enough. So Betcher does, um, it kind of got me thinking a little bit. When I saw his name and I looked at it, I'm like, I don't want this guy. Giants defensive coordinator, that's stupid. But the more I thought about it, I don't hate it. So I haven't really put a ton of thought into it, but that one jumped out at me when I looked at it on the podcast today. Should we trade Preston Smith? Um I don't know exactly what we're going to be able to do with Preston Smith. I tend to think he's going to walk and we're going to get a comp pick for him, but uh, I don't know. I don't think he's going to be back. I'll just I'll answer it that way. Um, Chris didn't respond on the Travis Etienne. I, I'm not saying he's not a good football player. I just Packer fans will lose their mind. So I'm just curious what your rationale is because I, I feel like most people would be very angry if we drafted Travis Etienne, the running back. Got it to work. Two buzz to call in, though. What you talking about, Goose? Don't forget the holding big. No, I know. Well, that's what I'm saying. If Had they not made that dumb call, if they didn't throw the flag, then they punt. If we get the ball, we score a touchdown, game's over, Packers are going to the Super Bowl next week. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's, it's not automatic we score a touchdown, but if we had to get a stop and then, again, score and then get a two-point conversion, I just don't think we win. I really don't. Blake wanted too much money. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, from a financial standpoint, maybe we wouldn't have kept him anyways. But it's just the general point of when you're talking about, and I know this isn't exactly how it works. There's a scheme aspect. There's certain things that factor into it. But getting the best out of your players, you know, here's what Petten got out of Blake. It's as low as I can get it. Let me just get my knuckle in there. Here's what Betcher got out of Blake, right? So it's intriguing, I guess is all I'm saying. Should we pursue J.J. Watt? No. Absolutely not. J.J. Watt is way too expensive. 
Um, I think he's at that point in his career where he's starting to fall off a little bit. He's one of the better pass rushers that the NFL has ever seen, ever. Like, Pete J.J. Watt is about as good as it gets. Sorry about the background noise. We're doing laundry. Um, but, I mean, it's just he's not worth the money, and we can't afford him. And um, he's also injured constantly, so I don't know that we get a ton of value out of that. So uh, We're going to run this until 3 o'clock. We've got four more minutes. Yes, Mike, that's sort of sort of what I'm thinking. Um, so I've got about four more minutes. If somebody wants to jump in, make one more call. Again, anybody, I'm just going to, uh, no, I'm not going to. If anybody has the ability to follow Cheese and Packers, or just comment, I already did, and your thing's not working, you suck at setting things up, that'd be great too. Also, we could test the taco fund. If you want to, like, donate 50 cents, see if that works. Just a thought. we got four got three minutes to kill. Can this be a top five defense? Ex yes. And that's what excites me about getting a new defensive coordinator. The thing that scares me about getting a new defensive coordinator is the prospect of it getting much worse. The thing that excites me is the, the talent level of this of the individual players is a top five defense. The, the Rams were a number one defense. They got three good players, right? Two corners and a defensive tackle. Their safeties, you couldn't even name them. The rest of the defensive line, nobody cares. I mean, nobody cares about that group. Dominant. Dominant. The, the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Dominant defense. Who? Why? Because of Sue? He's 400 years old. Nobody cares about Indomit and Sue. Who? Fast linebackers, which, by the way, one of their linebackers is massively overhyped. He's not very good. You're telling me two good linebackers is why they have one of the best defenses in football. No, it's about getting the best out of your guys. And when you talk about the full potential of this defensive unit, absolutely you can be top five. Um... Did I hear the the cap may not be as bad off as reported the 175? I did. I saw it could be as high. I mean, this was a long time ago. I saw that it could be as high as 200, which would be pretty massive. That gets us almost back into the black just right there. Um, that would be huge. We'll have to see exactly what happens with that. I don't really know. Obviously, I'm hopeful of that. Um, Mike Jackson said he followed. Followed Cheese and Packers. So, I don't know. It's not working. I don't really know how to how to set that up. We'll figure it out. Will the Packers pursue a cheap receiver in free agency? Will they pursue anyone? I, see, that's a good question. I don't know about receiver exactly, but just something about the way that, that Brian Gutekunst has been talking. And this is why I've been telling people not to worry about the cap, because I don't think the Packers are worried about the cap. They talk as though they've got plans for free agency. They've, they've made comments in, in regard to, um, you know, there's going to be guys that are available in free agency that we're not really used to, and we want to make sure that we can position ourselves to do this and that. I think they're going to do some stuff. I had this weird, I don't know if it was today or yesterday or what, but I had this weird, like, gut feeling, like, dude, they're going to do something big. And I'm, this is not me dog whistling about Aaron Rodgers, I promise you. It's just, I just got this feeling, like, dude, something big is going to happen. I don't know what it is, and I tried to think, like, what are they going to do? Um, but I just, I just, it seemed weird, because it's like, I know they don't have money, and I got a pretty good feeling that they have intentions in free agency. Um, I don't know, I just, I just got this weird feeling they're planning on doing something kind of big, and I'm not exactly sure what that is. Um, another easy one. How much faith in Goot do you have? I have a lot of faith in Gutekunst. I think um, we had we saw him go out in free agency and get guys that nobody thought was interesting. You know, Zadarius Smith. Everyone shrugged their shoulders, including myself. And then when I saw how much we were paying him, I thought that is kind of stupid. Um, Preston, I liked more, not because I thought he was a better player, just the price made more sense. But I mean, you, you look at that. You look at Amos, who was one of the better safeties in football this year. Um, Billy Turner was not very good in his first year, but he basically saved what, what season we had this year. If we hadn't had Billy Turner uh, with all the injuries, we'd have been in a lot of trouble. Um, I mean, he's done some fan – that's not even speaking about the draft picks. I mean, his first-round record is unbelievable. Jair and Savage and Rashawn. You look at Elton Jenkins in the second round. You look at A.J. Dillon. Looks like he's going to be a star. We still haven't seen DeGuara. He looked really impressive before he got hurt. Um, Kamal Martin looked like a really impressive – player from the little bit that we've seen they didn't play him as much but he looked really impressive um i have a lot of faith and, and and partly when you look at it from the coaching standpoint right they had to go out and find a head coach they found matt lafleur they did a fantastic job i, I trust that brian gutekunst and matt lafleur are going to be able to find us a very good defensive coordinator somebody that fits you know now that they've had a chance to look at this defense look at what they need look at what they don't have look at all the things that are going on you know the defenses that they admire that they've gone up against that they can't quite get past these are the guys saying, I, we need one of those guys in this room, and we can go out and get them. Um, 
I, I'm a huge fan of Brian Gutekunst. I know some people aren't, and they, they're really mad about what happened with Jordan Love. I'm a huge fan. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know how long it'll last. Everybody kind of has their period of time, and things start to fall off. But I, I, I would not want anybody else right now. Um, Gut and Matt Lafleur gave me high hopes, 100. percent Would the Packers even try to move in the draft to take someone, move up? Um, I don't know. I mean, the the obvious answer is yes. It's all about value, but um, I'm trying to think what exactly. You know, generally you're not going to move up for like a linebacker. I mean, you could, but um, are there needs aligned with somebody that you'd want to move up for? I don't know that that's necessarily the case. Um, but again, it all kind of comes down to value. For example, if you've got, let's say there's one guy, you know, if we're picking a pick, what are we picking at? They're 29? I don't even know. Let's say it's 29. Um, and we're at pick like 26. And you've got somebody, there's one guy left on your board because the way the boards are structured, it's not exactly a board like the way we do it. It's in tiers. So you've got sort of your top tier, which are like the top five guys, your second tier, whatever. So you, let's say you've got one guy left on that second tier, which you would take in, let's say, the top 12. If he's there at pick like 26, which you know could realistically happen depending on what other people think of him or whatever, you move up, and it really doesn't matter what position they are. This guy should have been gone at pick 12. We get a fantastic value. Of course, we'll give up a fourth round pick to move up and get this guy, or a fifth round pick, or whatever it's going to take to move up. Um, so those kinds of questions are always hard because there's so many variables. Who's the player? What's the position? What are our needs? What is it going to cost? What what is our what does the board say? Um, so yes, they would always be willing to move up depending on the situation. They'd always be willing to move back depending on the situation. You know, the, the exact opposite is true when the board is the other way around. Um, you know, if, if we're sitting here, and even if there's somebody that's a, a, a position of need, let's say we really want an offensive tackle and the, the guy on the top of our board is an offensive tackle, however, it's a terrible value, value here at 29. We think this guy is like a mid-second round pick. We're trading back. We're going we're gonna to do everything we can to work the phone and say, please come up. Hopefully somebody else has a completely different board than we do that says that they've got somebody they really like, they're willing to come up, we want to go back, get it some extra value. You know, so it's more situational and based on that kind of stuff as opposed to, you know, in, you know, early February, late January saying, you know what, I think we want to trade up. I don't really think they're thinking in that regard. We are past three, but let me see if I can clean up these comments here. Favorite Packer moment of the season. It's funny, I actually just had somebody, or for the Packernet newsletter, make sure you jump in on that. I don't have a link or anything for you, but we do have a Packernet newsletter you can join. If you would like to reach out to me, I'll get you hooked up. But um, that was one of the things, is asking me and, and the other guys some of those questions, and I had to think of one. And I couldn't think of one, obviously, on the spot. There's so many memories. But the one that stood out that I thought would be fun, that I knew the other guys wouldn't pick, was um, A.J. Dillon's 30-yard touchdown run on 4th and 1. I mean, just the the total encapsulation of what that was. That it was a game in Lambeau, in the snow. It was a team we were not supposed to beat. We absolutely stomped them out. I mean, it was one of the more dominant performances by the Green Bay Packers all year. And it featured A.J. Dillon, who was probably the future of our running back room. It was a fourth down play. It was his biggest run of the season, 30 yards. Um, and he got a touchdown out of it. I mean, it's just everything about it was beautiful. Were there more exciting moments where I jumped out of my chair? Probably, but... That one just stuck out as kind of a, that was a very, very cool moment on the season. Um, Justin, and this will be the final one, and we're going to get out of here. Justin says, I have had my uh, haven't had my ear to the ground when it comes to the draft, but a big part of, of me really wants to trade back and trade the pick away thoughts. Again, it kind of just depends. Um, generally, when you're at the very back of the first, you're kind of, you know, if we just think about it in terms of first-round guys, right? Let's say that's our tier, first-round guys, second-round guys, whatever. Usually the first round guys burn out at about pick like 25-ish. I mean, it, it again, that's completely random. Depends on the depth of the draft or whatever. There might be 40 first round guys on your board this year or whatever. But I think generally, from what I've heard anyways, these teams have maybe like 20 to 25 first round guys. So if you're picking like 29-ish, you're probably looking at a second round board. That's not to say you wouldn't take one of these guys if you really like them and you're worried about losing them or whatever. But... Um, I think generally trading back is not the worst thing. It's always depressing when you do it. But um, the other cool thing about it is there are some guys that at least at this point in time are seen as like late first, early second round quarterbacks, which are usually teams you think about Lamar Jackson, guys trading back into the first round to take that quarterback to get that fifth-year option on the quarterback. But you got guys like Mac Jones from Alabama that, um, I mean, some people think he's going to go top 15-ish, but 
I think generally with the boards, the way they, they pan out right now, he's kind of a late first, early second round guy. And also Kyle Trask is another one that I think could be sort of that late first somebody trades up to get uh, kind of a prospect. And if you look at the teams real quick, I'll pull these up here. Um, if you look at the teams that are at the, the front that may not get a quarterback that may want one, teams like the Atlanta Falcons. Maybe they just take a quarterback, maybe they don't, I don't know. But if they do, what about, um, you know, let's say Jacksonville, the Jets, and uh, Atlanta take quarterbacks. You've still got Philadelphia might be somewhat interested. Detroit 100% needs a quarterback. You've got uh, Carolina, you've got Denver, possibly Dallas if they move on. I guess we'll take this call, but that's, you could see those teams wanting to trade back up in. What's going on? What's your name? What's your uh, call sign? Hey, so this is Chuck. How are we doing, Dr. Schlipp? Uh, the long-time listener, first-time caller here. Hi, Chuck, with the fake accent. Hey. How are you? Doing well. So, uh, question about the schedule. Way off the draft, completely changing gears. Okay. Okay. So, we play the same place teams that won their divisions last year, correct? Sure. Okay, so what, who determines where that game is? I've never been able to find as, anything on the Google machines or nothing. As far as home or away or whatever? Correct. I did know that. I don't remember exactly how that worked. Because um, I know there was some controversy a while ago about we had, you know, we had faced this team like three times and it's always at their home. I, I think what it is is for that division it has to be two home and two away something to that regard. So mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're facing the NFC East, there has to be two home and two away. So you might end up facing the same guys at home twice, whereas, you know, it seems like it should, it should be once here and once there. But really, it's just for that division, it's two home and two away. It's something like that. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it is something to that right. regard. So that's that's kind of the best off the top of my head that I can give you on that. Okay. Uh, okay. You got time for one more? Go for it. Okay, does the Shanahan, LaFleur, all these guys produce actual champions since 1998? Champions in terms, like, teams that win Super the, Bowls? Correct. Well, uh, the Broncos did, yeah. Right, 98. Um, so there's one. <laughs> that's, that's all I get. I mean, the 49ers came close and missed. Uh, the Packers right. came close and missed. The Rams came close and missed. So I guess, I mean, I, I could see where somebody can make the case where you're, you're good and not good enough, but I, I don't think, you know, winning a Super Bowl is, it's always elusive. You know what I mean? It's always extremely difficult, and I don't know if we can boil it down to, you know, if you're really, really good but you just can't win that last game, it's because the, the Shanahan scheme is just, it's got this weird quirk where it's never quite good enough. I just, I can't quite boil it down that way. You can right. make the argument, and I get where you're going with it, if that is where you're going with it. Um, but from from my standpoint, it's just I just think it's always really hard to win a Super Bowl. And if you have a system that is proven to dominate and proven to be ahead of the curve and proven to be a, a real problem for other teams' defenses and whatever else, I think that's generally going to be a good a good system. You know, you look at the Andy Reid tree. You look at that and say, well, is that really any good? Well, it tends to be. I mean, Andy Reid seems to be doing pretty well with it. The guys that have left and gone elsewhere, they seem to be pretty good, but not quite good enough. You know, so I, I don't really see it in that way in which it's not a very good championship style of, of offense. I just think the NFL is where they're headed, and I think that if you can incorporate that and do that well, um, you've got yourself a pretty good team. And I think the Packers are an example of that. And again, I'm not going to necessarily blame the scheme on that. I think. Unless you can find some kind of a correlation that says there's something about the scheme that where you go to the NFC Championship game and suddenly your team forgets how to play football. But I, I can't quite draw that parallel. Hmm. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, man. All right. Let's see if we got this pretty well cleaned up now. I think, I think I'm ready to bounce out of here. Um, there is one more. I guess I'm saying I'm not that impressed with the prospects. That'll be around 29. Yeah, and, and it's just it's just too early, you know. I mean, I, I could tell you who on my board is, is at 29, um, but that's going to change. I mean, there's going to be some guys that you never heard of that are at 29, some guys that are at 14 that are going to be at 29. 
We'll see how it goes. Um, I, I'm not as far into it probably as you are, Justin, as far as actually watching the prospects. Um, I don't really have a lot of favorites. I'm starting to develop those, but uh, I, don't, I don't really have it quite yet. But I think that's normal. I think when you're at 29, you kind of just, you know, again, usually like if you're going to fall in love with guys, it's there's going to be like 15 of them. That, that was the cool thing about when we picked at like 12. You got like 12 guys, and it's like, we're going to get one of them. There's somebody that I love, you know, Brian Burns or whoever, that's going to be there uh, when our turn comes around. When you're picking at the back half of the first or the back end of the first, a lot of times you're, you're kind of bummed at what's there. But, again, look at how good Brian Gutekunst has not just done in the first round, but second round, eh, fifth round, you know. So uh, we can have faith that, you know, just because we're not getting a, a top 15 pick, that we're still still a good chance that there's some great players and Brian Gutekunst is going to find them. So, anyways, um, thanks for hanging out. i got to get going and, you know, be responsible and take care of the kids and do all that kind of stuff. So.